In today's video, we're going to talk about when you should buy life insurance. So should you buy it at age 18 when you're relatively young and healthy and lock in your rates? Should you buy it at age 25? Should you buy it when you buy a house? Should you buy it when you get married? Should you buy it when you have kids? When is the right time to buy life insurance? So by the end of this video, you'll know not only what the different types of life insurance are and which one is best for you, you'll also know when is the right time and when is the wrong time. So make sure you stick around to the very end because I will talk about when you should not buy life insurance and you can save your money and don't waste your money on things that you don't need. What's up, guys? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Philip Setter. I'm the founder and CEO of Affinity Life, which is an online life insurance brokerage here in Canada where you can actually view quotes 100% online and apply 100% online as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll put the link in the description below and you can check it out. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, before we get into when you should buy life insurance, let's just go through some quick basics just so we understand that we're on the same playing field. Okay, so basic number one, term versus permanent. Term life insurance is the easiest type of life insurance to understand. It's the most inexpensive option. You're buying it for a specific period of time. So you can pick a different term. You can pick a term 10, a term 20, or a term 30, and that's going to last for the duration of that term, obviously. This type of life insurance is meant to cover you for a specific period of time. And in my opinion, is the best type of life insurance for the vast majority of Canadians because, well, when you need life insurance, you just want to cover it for a specific period of time. You Usually you need that when you get married, you have kids, you have debt, you have a house, you bought a car, you have a new job. And if you were to pass away, then your loved ones would be very financially impacted. So you want to cover off that liability. So if something were to happen to you, they would be taken care of. However, as you get older, your investments start to increase, you start to pay down your house, the kids move out of the house, your partner starts to become more financially stable. And if something were to happen to you, yes, while it would be terrible, they wouldn't be as financially impacted. So term life insurance is great to cover you from age 25 to let's say 55 or 30 to 55, 56, 57, 60, somewhere in that time period. Permanent life insurance, on the other hand, is now not a what if, it's a when. Permanent life insurance is meant to cover you all the way until the very end. So it's something that's guaranteed. It's going to pay out, whether that be at age 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, it doesn't matter. It will pay out. Now, this type of life insurance is meant for leaving something behind for the next generation, such as your children or your grandchildren, or leaving something behind to a charity, or maybe you have a disabled child that you want to make sure is taken care of for the rest of their entire life. It's also used for estate planning. So if you knew you had taxes upon death and you wanted to take care of that, that's a really important feature of permanent life insurance. And the third reason for permanent life insurance, which I'm sure you've heard of before, is investing in life insurance. Now, I have very strong opinions about this. I'm not going to get into it in this video. If you guys are interested in my opinion about investing in life insurance and comparing it apples to apples to do a traditional RRSP, drop a comment below and I will send that video to you. Okay, so again, just going back, the purpose of life insurance is if you have loved ones in your life and something were to happen to you, would they be financially impacted? That's a really easy question to ask. And if the answer is yes, you need life insurance. That's a very easy general rule of thumb. So let's talk about a few reasons when you should get life insurance and when is the right time to get life insurance. Number one reason is you're about to get married or you are now married. You're getting married, you're about to get married something like that. Well, at this point, now you're essentially bringing the two lives together. So before you were just on your own, if something happened to you and you had a bunch of outstanding debt and something else, that would just get washed up into your own estate and it wouldn't affect your partner because, well, you know, they're not part of your legal situation. However, when you get married or common law, now you're bringing your lives together and you need to think about the liabilities that you're bringing into that relationship, okay? So if you guys buy a house together and you have outstanding debt. Maybe you have a credit card. Maybe you have a line of credit. Maybe you have your car payments. If something were to happen to you, well, at that point, now your partner is going to need to take care of those debts. So getting life insurance to cover that off once you get married or once you become common law partners is a really good time to consider purchasing life insurance. Number two, when to buy life insurance. This is pretty obvious, but after having children, 
This, in my opinion, is the number one reason why people need life insurance. Because if you have a newborn baby or you have several newborn babies, then if something were to happen to you, your spouse, your loved one would be left on their own with these children now to try and take care of them and pick up the pieces with no financial support. So if you think having kids right now is hard enough with the two of you, imagine just one of you trying to pay the bills and take care of the kids and clean the house and prepare the meals and bring them to school and do all these other things, grocery shopping, et cetera, et cetera, with zero financial support, they will be in for a very difficult time. So if you're about to have kids or you have kids already, this is a very, very, in my opinion, number one reason why you need to buy life insurance. Very important time. I would consider buying it right away if that's a scenario that you're in. Number three, you're in the process of purchasing a home and you want to leave that home to someone, okay? So maybe you're not in a relationship with someone. However, maybe you have family members, brothers or sisters or cousins or other family members, parents, and you're in the process of buying a home. And now, okay, that's a good job, congratulations. However, you're thinking if something were to happen, what's gonna happen to this home? If one of your goals is to leave this home to someone, maybe you have siblings that live with you, maybe you have parents that live with you as well, and you wanted to leave that to them, if something were to happen to you, this would be a really good time to consider purchasing life insurance. So if something did happen to you, the mortgage would be taken care of. And by the way, make sure you get life insurance and not mortgage insurance because mortgage insurance is a completely different, inferior product that may or may not pay out and it's more expensive and it's a declining benefit. So don't get mortgage insurance, get life insurance. Number four reason to consider when to purchase life insurance is you're starting a business with other partners. So here's the thing. If you're starting a business on your own, it's no problem. If you passed away, I mean, depending on how large the business is, if you had multiple other employees and you had other people that might want to take the business over, that might be a good idea. But if it's just in this process of a startup, it's not very big. And if you passed away, the business would essentially dissolve. You might not need life insurance. However, if you are starting a business with other partners or even by yourself and you have debts that you're accumulating within the business, this would be a very good time. So with partners in the business, here's what happens. So let's say that you have yourself and two other people in the business. If one of you were to pass away, well, the first thing that would be really impacted is that individual's contribution to the business. So maybe one of the partners is responsible for all the social media marketing of the company. Now that he or she is gone, you're going to need to replace that salary with someone else. So you're going to want to get some life insurance to cover off the expense of that key employee, which is also a shareholder of the company. The other reason that you're going to want to purchase life insurance on all the lives of the partners within that business, if one of them were to die, the way that it works is essentially those shares would then go to essentially the next of kin of that individual. So that could be their partner, that could be their spouse, that could be their parents. And here's the thing, you got into business with that individual, not with their husband, not with their wife, not with their parents. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a mechanism within the corporation that there is life insurance on all the lives of the partners. And if one of them were to pass away, the corporation will then have funds available to buy those shares from the deceased estate. And the two other surviving partners can continue on with operations of the business. The deceased estate can then, you know, collect that life insurance and, you know, use it for whatever be it. But they are selling those shares to the other two shareholders and they are continuing on with the business. And I've seen situations where this wasn't structured properly. And all of a sudden, the other party decided the surviving partner, the surviving husband, husband or wife decided that, you know what, I actually don't want to sell the shares. I want to come into the business and there's nothing they could have done. There was no shareholders agreement. There was no life insurance to fund it. And so now they're in business with this person and they did not want to be in business with this person. So if you're starting a business with partners, get life insurance. And number five reason consider getting life insurance is if and I talked about it a little bit before, but I didn't get into it, is that investment component of an insurance policy. If you're the minority of Canadians and you're in a very high income environment and you have all of the other traditional strategies max, such as your RSP and your TFSA, and you're not carrying any credit card debt or lines of credit, you don't have any high interest debt that's outstanding, then maybe a good time to consider purchasing life insurance as an investment strategy. You have excess cash and you're looking for an alternative investment. That might be a good time 
time to consider buying life insurance. Again, I made another lengthy video on this. If you're interested in that, just drop a comment below and I'll send it to you. But if you're part of the minority of Canadians that don't have their RSP max, don't have their TFSA max, and are carrying high interest credit card debt, not for you. Wait until you have all of that finalized, increase your income, become one of the high income earners of Canada, then you can look at the strategy. All right, let's talk about when is not a good time to purchase life insurance. And this might be a controversial opinion for a lot of advisors and a lot of companies. However, this is what it is. This is my opinion. Number one reason why I don't think you should get life insurance or when is not the right time to get life insurance is just because you're young, just because you're healthy, and companies say, lock in your rate. I was on Facebook this morning and I do a lot of searches for life insurance, obviously, because I'm researching a lot of these topics and I'm coming up with different content and different material. So I get constant ads from every single insurance company. And one of the number one ads from a large insurance company in Canada popped up and it said, you know, we're busting myths of life insurance. And here's one of them. You know, you don't need life insurance when you're young. And it's like, squash it. Yeah, you do. Get it when you're young. Get it when you're healthy. Lock in the rates. Here's the thing. If you're healthy and you imagine that you're continuing to be healthy, you have a good diet, you have a good exercise regime, you don't have any adverse health conditions within the family, no family history of maybe diabetes or anything like that, then I would say don't get life insurance if you don't need it. You don't have to lock in the rates just because you're young. That's a marketing image to sell life insurance to people who don't need it. Here's the thing. We buy life insurance to protect our loved ones. If you don't have any loved ones, then you don't need life insurance. Just because you're young, that doesn't mean you need to get life insurance and lock in the rates. Wait until you actually have somebody in your life that you care about. So age isn't a contributing factor to when you need life insurance. If you're 18 years old and you're married and you have kids, you need life insurance. If you're 40 years old and you're single and no one in your life depends on you, you might not need life insurance. So just because you're young, do I think you should lock in rates while you're healthy and you're young and pay for these premiums when you don't need life insurance? No. And this is just my opinion, by the way. No, I don't think you need life insurance just to lock in the rate. If you do have some adverse health conditions in the family and you're not very healthy, maybe it would be a good idea to lock in the rates. But if you're relatively healthy, good exercise, good diet, then I would not get life insurance when you're young. I would wait until you actually need it. You actually have loved ones in your life that re financially rely upon you and I would get it at that point. Number two, when not to get life insurance, and this kind of ties back into the previous one, however, I'll just go through it, is no one relies upon you financially. There's nobody in your life, whether that be a spouse, a partner, children, business partners, your parents, your siblings, no one in your life financially relies upon you. And age is not a contributing factor to this. This could be at age 18, 20, 25, 40, 60, 80, 100, it doesn't matter. If nobody relies upon you financially, and if you were to pass away, it really wouldn't, not that it wouldn't matter from an emotional point of view, but from a financial point of view, it wouldn't matter, then why is there a need for life insurance? In my opinion, you don't need life insurance at this point. Which brings me to point number three, which is also very similar, is if you have outstanding debt, okay? This is pitched by a lot of different companies, again, and a lot of different buyers who say, well, you have credit card debt, or you have lines of credit, or you took out a student loan, or you took out all this other debt, you need to buy life insurance to cover it off. Here's the thing, if you have a spouse, if you have a partner, if you have assets that you want to leave behind to other people in your life, yes, you need life insurance. However, if you don't have anyone that financially relies upon you, and you really have no assets, there's no point getting life insurance to cover off these debts. You're literally just paying for this life insurance. So if you were to pass away, the banks would get their money back. That's literally why you'd be buying it. The way that it works when you pass away is essentially in your estate, if you had assets such as a house or a car or other things, and you had outstanding debts, then those lenders would come to your estate and they would say, hey, we want to get paid first. So if you had those items, house, car, whatever else, business shares, and you wanted to pass them down to someone else, sure, get life insurance. However, if you had nobody that you wanted to pass these assets down to, then what's the point of life insurance? If you just said, well, I have the house and I have a mortgage on the house, but when I pass away, I don't care where it goes. I don't want it to go to anyone. I just want it to go back to the bank. I don't have anyone that I would give this house to. Then you're really just purchasing life insurance so the bank gets their money back. And that doesn't make any sense. So if you have debt, but you have assets and you don't care where they go, you don't want them to go to anyone, you don't need life insurance in my opinion. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that I answered some of your questions about when the right time to buy life insurance and when the wrong time to buy life insurance is. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I answer each and every single comment. And if you guys are enjoying this content, all I ask is that you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.